Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to part three of Steampunk Rally Fusion, a comic edition, which also includes the original Steampunk Fusion, or sorry, Steampunk Rally. So I am currently going through the cards. Uh, check out the first video, kind of shows off. Go through the rule book, kind of brief explanation. How to, not brief, I guess it's like a 20 minute video. So in a lengthened explanation on how to play the game. Uh, but now I not an actual walkthrough. Uh, and then I started going through the tiles and all that stuff. And I'm just going through all the cards now. Um, the fusion dice are kind of cool. Because I don't know if you can really tell. But they're translucent. That's really cool. Um, I don't know what else you would ever use a 4 to 9 sided die for though. In another game. Um, I always like getting unique, different dice for from various games. Um, but lots of them you can't use in something else because they have a special picture on them or um, something like that. And I can't open this pack of cards. You think for how often I uh, open board games, I'd be better at opening packs of cards. All right. So, I'm going to keep trying to only go through the ones that are for the original game, but I won't promise anything. Um, just a quick recap from the last video. Up here is your discard amount, so if you discard this uh, after your draft phase, or during, you can um, gain two steam dice or two gears. Uh, then during, your act during the activation phase or during the... You can place an electric die here to gain two fire tokens. And since it has a star here, it can be any number. Uh, so we have the Nafira canister. And these are... So we went through lots of the bronze. Now we're going through the silver ones. So these ones aren't going to have all the extra connections. The bronze ones. Um, let me grab a bronze card here. Nope, oh, that's not a bronze one. So the bronze ones usually had four spots on there. Top, bottom, left, and right. Uh, the other ones are not going to have one. But when you do combine them, you have to combine two vents together. So this boiler can only go on the front. It can't go on any other side. So it limits where you can play it. But it's usually a little bit stronger ability. Uh, this Nafia canister can only go on the bottom. Uh, but it also gives you a little bit stronger abilities um so you have a boiler here so you have four fire spots you play at least two you gain a steam uh so that can really help you get some steam up going got a couple boilers we have a generator so kind of same thing spend steam to gain a bunch of electricity we have a coal bunker um, so if you play a fire eye, fire dice on here and use your, uh, invention ability, you can... I'm not sure what that does. It just lets you play your fire. I don't see an effect for that. Hmm. It's a discard stuff, though. Um, but it could just be something to throw on there to take damage, too. Uh, we have a flash boiler. We have a combustion chamber. That's like the idea of these cards, because they all they all they're all like logical things. They're not like um like super fantasy idea. Like they're stuff that actually exists. Like combustion chambers, electricity into steam. It makes sense. Um and when you do get rid of a card, um like you have gears on there for an ability, you can get you gain those gears back. Um, but not unless, not, not the discard ability. Um, and when we get to one, I'll show you. We have a superheater. We have a capacitor. Oh my god, it's down, driving on the ground. It's hitting on the bottom there. It's kind of neat. Uh, we have a firebox. Uh, 
Oh, is that what that was? Did I look at that card wrong? No. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out why this just had that. There's the difference. So, like, here's the box where you play the guy. This is what you get. So if you have this coal bunker, it doesn't do anything until you play your event, and then you just automatically get one fire. That's what that was. I was just getting confused on the boxes. Um, step up transformer. Alright, and then we have some more inventors. So we have Nikola Tesla. Who's going to let you use his invention ability to gain either gain electricity or remove an electricity. And he's going to have the induction motor. So I have electricity to move faster. Uh, Ada Loveless. And steam and coal, or steam and gears, or just a bunch of gears. She's gonna have the steam turbine, which you see again. We've seen some of these before, but that's fine. It's not a problem. It's just your starter card. Uh, there's nothing, nothing wrong. So they all have to be a hundred percent unique. Uh, Thomas Edison gets the induction motor as well. Alexander Graham Bell, who frankly looks like some kind of uh, he has telephone attached to him. I really should show off the backs of all these cards. Uh, he has the Nafia engine, which we've seen earlier. And Alberto Santo Dumont. It's the Bird of Prey. I did some, some good motion off of that one. Not sure if that's just going to be that way or that way. I mean, again, it can really go either direction, can't it? All right, so that is... Oh, I got some more cards. I missed this little pop. Uh, Herdia Errington. Induction motor. And if you want more information on these characters... These, I call them characters. They're people. They're real people. Uh, the booklet had uh, good information about all of them. Uh, George Washington Carver. I like that he has his little, little plants there. Uh, he's got the Laminius Ligamagen. And I don't, I butchered that terribly, I'm sure. Um, Goglinio Marconi. And he's got an induction motor. Uh, Lizo Miter, uh, a Nafia engine. So like all the all the actual inventors are, I think are fairly unique. I don't think they repeat them exactly too much, but then they're set. They're extra cards, and if you have to explode stuff. You can always explode their specific card. So you have uh, Elijah J McCoy has a steam turbine, so you can't. Uh, destroy their um, their unique card if you have to. You just don't put it back in the pile so it doesn't get shuffled in if you have to shuffle the deck. Uh, but you never destroy their cockpit. So like you could be like, oh, they have this card, but I don't really need it. You are definitely allowed to get rid of their other cards. Alright, so then we have, let's go through this pile here. Actually, what's this? These are gold ones. Set him aside because he's for the fusion set. I'm gonna try and show off all these guys. All right, we have some movement ones. So we have some arachno legs. Now we're getting some more fantastical ideas. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know if anyone used arachno legs before. We have some wings. They're gonna give us some more movement. Drive wheel. So one steam to gain one, to gain some movement. A couple of those. We have an auger, a giant drill. Nice. Uh, we have a propeller. Makes sense to have a couple of those. 
some treads. Which, they cost a lot. You have to have five, but you gain one movement and some uh, build-ups so you can take some damage. So that's actually kind of helpful. Uh, arrow stack. It's really only the spider legs are the only, like, really fake ones. I mean, I'm sure someone made them. They probably existed, but we have rocket boosters. Uh, yeah, so this one you get you... Four, you get double movement here, but you're going to take a point of damage. You're going too fast. Uh, but sometimes that's what you need to do, right? The Penny Farthing. I like how they put the little symbols on different parts of the vehicle. Like, they, they don't just slap the thing over. They try and make sure you can still see the vehicle. Uh, it's a really, really creative way to do these. Um, ion Thrusters. I don't think too many of these inventors use ion thrusters. Uh, but boy, that is actually a really good card. And we got four of those. So those are all the gold cards. So now we have, I think, some boost cards and maybe some other ones. Then we'll start getting into the fusion. There we go. Alright, so... The boost cards are special abilities that you can get. So during your draft phase, you draw the four different cards. The bronze, the silver, and the gold, and one boost card. Boost cards go under your uh, your special your damage dial. So that, that way you can play it at pretty much any time um, to gain a bonus. I believe, and I have to double check the rules. I didn't see it when I was looking, but I believe you can put any number of them under there. So, like, you can store them up over a couple of turns, and then you can keep playing a few of them in a row. Or you might only be able to play one at a time, but I think you can store multiple. I have to double check the rules. I didn't see it specifically. Um, so, like, this is a particle beam. So, it works like the other thing. You discard it for one of the different things. Um, but it's only playable during the vent phase. So it does limit it, but you can remove an electric die. Also, each of your opponents gains three damage, but reduce the amount of damage gained by one for each inven invention in front of them on the racetrack. So each of your opponent gains three damage. Reduce the amount of damage gained by one for each inventing in front of them on the racetrack. So, yeah, kind of like timing, timing abilities. So, you have um, an other tear. Take up to four dice currently occupying dice slots on your opponent's inventions. Roll them and place them in your dice pool. You cannot take dice from the storage slots. So, that's kind of interesting because, uh, you're gaining extra dice dues on your turn, but you're also freeing up spots on your opponent's side. Uh, we got a couple of those. We have the Opry, a Pegri Manipulator. Also uh, gaining electric dice. Also charge up the two dice in your dice pool to any pip value. That's kind of cool. Get you what you need to do. Help you with some of them uh, special inventions. Even though it's not wasn't part of that this set. Um, a grappling claw. In clockwise order, each of your opponents must choose to either receive one damage or allow you to gain one movement. Interesting. That's cool. Uh, difference engine. Gain four gears. Just straight up. Nothing wrong with that. Play it whenever. Um, optimization, gain one movement for every three gears you possess, up to a maximum of five movement. The Catalyst Reactor, uh, remove a fire. Also, discard any number of machine parts. Oh, why is this not focusing there? I can tell it's not focusing. Um, Alright, sorry if it's a little blurry. It doesn't want to focus right for some reason. 
Also discard any number of machine parts from your invention. For each part discarded, gain three die of the color shown in the corner of the card. Awesome. So I just want you to burn some cards to gain some points. Uh, polymerization. Um, now we're playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, gain gain uh, health or damage. Uh, restore damage. Also discard any number of random dice or any number of dice from your dice pool to gain equal number of gear. So that could be helpful. Uh, electromagnet. Movement for each invention in front of you on the racetrack. Maximum five. Then inventions in the inventions in first place move back one space. Uh, repair clause. Remove all dice with two or fewer pips that currently occupy slots in your invention. Ignore dice in your storage slots. You may vent dice before resolving this effect. Uh, Greek fire. Remove a fire. Also take a fire from the supply and place it beside any racetrack space. This place is plus two train until the end of the round. Just burning, burning the fields. Uh, aerodynamics. Move two fire. Also, if your invention has no incomplete valve connections, gain three extra movements. So there's where it's important to make sure all your valves are connected um, by placing them uh, front and back cards and top and bottom, gaining you some extra bonuses. Uh, Claverite crystal. Gain some dice. Cheat. I will just cheat. It shows me driving way off the path. Uh, a smooth movement. If your invention consists of fewer than eight machine parts, including the cockpit, or double if it has less than five. So it kind of gains you a bonus. That could actually be a nice way to catch up if you exploded. Uh, mass ejection. If you lost at least three machine parts during the damage round, uh, Remove some dice and gain two movement. Then every mentor behind you gains one gear. So that's kind of neat. Like, he's going to speed out of there. We have a weather machine. Also, all spaces without any terrain count as having one terrain until the end of this racist phase. The resonance based earthquake inducer. Everyone. Everyone on a space with terrain takes one damage. Also, use a gear from a supply to mark any space on the racetrack. Also, use a gear to mark any space on the racetrack. Ignore all terrain there for the rest of the game. Oh, okay, you did a. Okay, I did it. I was confused. So everyone's going to take damage on that one space, and you can choose one spot to remove the terrain from. Uh, we have a disintegrator ray. Each year, opponents receive one damage for each machine part on their invention over six. The Faraday cage. Also, uh, remove one electric, gain a dam remove a damage. Also, if you played this card immediately after opponent played a boost card, you may ignore it. Um, also ignore any further boost cards you choose for the rest of the round. Oh, that's mean. Uh, jump jets. Remove a steam. Gain smooth movement. Also receive one damage for every five machine parts on your invention. It's so heavy. And then finally, we have the Tesla coil. Also, each year opponent receives one. You gain three electricity and each opponent also gains three. All right. I want to look at one thing in the rule book. If I can dig it out of here before I start going through it, I believe are all the fusion cards. And the part of the reason why those fusion ones are more is because they added extra cards. So during the vent phase, normal boost.
Alright, I just thought, for some reason I was thinking you took damage during the vent phase, and that's not correct, which is why I was confusing myself. Alright, so, now we're going to look at the fusion cards. So first we're going to look at, we have Pagahuchi. So this is actually cool, because now he has gear cards. So you can place three gear here to gain this bonus, and play five gear here to gain this bonus whenever you use an invention. If you haven't seen that before on the other one, so the gears might be new. And then now he has a plasma drive. Um, so this has a bunch of extra stuff, so you gain the four. You can also overload your card, which means destroy this to gain two extra fusion dice. So that's definitely... Uh, interesting mechanic. I'm going to put these cards back in the box. And then let's look at some bronze fusion cards and some more inventors. Alright, so these are the fusion ones. That little fusion symbol. Uh, so you have arc lamps. Gain is spend some electricity to gain some steam or remove some steam. Um, all right, here's some new effects. This is why this is awesome to have double sets. So we have barrage assembler, uh, discard. Um, so when you discard a card, uh, or when, sorry, when you, when you sell a card. All right, I am misreading this here. When you sell a when you sell a drafted card, you get to discard. I forgot what that means. I looked at this ability before. Ugh. So I think we're going to come across this symbol a few times. So, that symbol is draft phase, and it has the discard symbol. So, where does it tell me what that does? Because I remember reading that specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now that I want to find it, I'm of course not going to find it. It might just be you have to sacrifice that card when you play during your uh, event, during your event phase. All right, so I think what this means, if I'm correct, and I could be wrong, so you have the Braj Assembler, so it says during your draft phase, if you discard a card or you sell a card, you gain a gear, is what this means. Um, so it's beneficial to sell cards if you have this guy out. Alright. I don't know why that was confusing me. Uh, containment basin. Store a die. You may discard a stored fusion die from this card to ignore the effects of a boost card. So that's actually kind of cool because you can store your fusion dice and actually get rid of them. Uh, we have the flapper fan. That's actually kind of neat. Oh, it's... Um, Alright, uh, the Galvanic Forge. Question mark is equal to the number of parts in your invention. So the bigger your invention is, the more you have to spend it to use it. The Gurney Carriage. Gains some steam, or gears and movement by spending steam. The Harmonic Reactor. So this will let you get either for four electricity, either gain two steam, or gain a fusion die, two fire die, but take one point of damage. Kind of like overloading it gets you more stuff, but you're going to take a point of damage. Uh, Mercury Arc Generator. Gain electricity when you sell a card. I like that idea, having them. I kind of actually like with these these extra ones because having more options like discarding stuff or gaining putting gears in here 
is really a cool idea. I just think it's going to make the game more fun to play with both of them mixed. Uh, so you have Pulse Reactor. We have a Recoil Generator. So I think we have one card for each other. We have a Repair Bot. Uh, how cute. Um, let's remove one card. And then we have the Sterling Engine. couple of those. Thermal Oxidizer. Oh, it costs six. That's quite a bit. Um, but again, you spend gears to like adjust your dives. Um, Thermonic Rectifier. Some electricity. The Uogang Generator. So I get you the fire by selling cards. All right, now we're into, so I'm gonna probably stop there for now in this video. But let's do one adventure and then we'll do the secret invention next. So we have Maria Marvinet. So she just gains, just to remove one fire. And hers is actually neat because it's on the bottom. Get a bunch more all on the top. So I like having one that's on the bottom. So I think it's probably just going to be like this. But it could be like that. Um, she has an air ambulance. Uh, so place two fire to gain a smooth movement. Or up to two fire. Five. Or gain regain two health. Alright. So we're going to stop that video there. And we're going to pick up. And we'll pick up with the... Uh, secret in secret projects. Um, and it looks cool. First, we're gonna look at the secret projects. Um, so the secret projects are a brand new card type that weren't weren't in the first game. So they're gonna have all these numbers on the outside: one through three, four through seven, eight through eleven, and then twelve. So it says uh, each person gets dealt, I think, one or two of these at the beginning of the turn. I don't remember how many. Um, but what you do then is you keep it face down. You can look at it any time to see what it does. Just a reminder. Um, but what you're going to do is during each turn you can charge with one or more dice in a run. Um, and so what that means is you're trying to, each time you play a die, you can move it up one spot. But to play more than one die in a turn, it has to be in a sequence. So if I played uh, a, four, a four die... Um, I can only move it one space. If I can play a four and then a five die, I can move it two spots. If I can play four, five, six, I can move it three spots. Uh, so rather than spending your dice on your machines to do other things, maybe you can't, you, know, you don't have enough, you're not gonna have a high enough number, you don't have enough open spots or whatever. Um, you can spend them on this if you can get them sequences so you can get more and more. I mean, you could. If you only have one die, you can slowly go up one at a time. But if you want to get a giant run, uh, you can do it. So you have to have at least somewhere between four to seven to use the effect. And then the higher you get, the better ability you're going to get. So if we look at these, we have the atomic rails. So if you have four, you get two speed. If you have eight, you get four speed plus a fusion guys. If you can manage to get 12, you get six speed plus a fusion die. You can definitely see how these are going to, these can be super powerful to use. Um, once you flip it over though, it's a one time effect. You flip it, you use it at whatever ranking it's currently at, and then you get the bonus. Um, we have hot rails. This one's going to gain you that speed, but instead of fusion dice, you get fire. Uh, maglev rails, so you get electricity. Piston rails, we're going to gain some steam. Uh, ribbon rails, we're going to gain a bunch of gears. And then we have the gizmo hanger, which is going to get you some uh, shielding and a bunch, bunch of shielding times seven. Up to seven, that could definitely heal you completely. Um, and then a bunch of gears. Steamboat hanger. She's all going to be kind of very similar to each other, it looks like. Stockpile hanger. 
you're gonna get less fusion guys and that's only it's for two reasons one because they have higher numbers on them because they start at four and they go up to nine so you're gonna have a lot you're gonna be able to activate more effects by playing a fusion guys secondly once a fusion guys is played on a machine you can't vent it to get it off the machine to free that space up so it's kind of like i can get this ability a bunch of times potentially but i'm not going to have the maybe you might not have the option of using it again although you could put fusion dice on something and then knowing you're going to have to destroy it on the next turn because you took too much damage it's not even a bad idea uh voltic hanger a welding hanger and then we have some tunnels it looks like so you have obsidian tunnel which gives you the smooth speed and fire the teleforce tunnel which gives you electricity a utility tunnel to get you steam and then we, ooh, we have some guns during the vent phase only so we have plasma turrets getting you fusion and you're going to deal two damage to a person behind you and a person in front of you three two fusion guys front behind or in the same spot and three front behind and two in the same spot that's crazy I'm pretty sure that's how those work, right? There's one damage to all the inventions in your space. If the icon has arrows to the left or right, the damage is also done to all inventions in front or behind you. So it's always in that space plus the other directions. That's crazy. Uh, so we have Lorenz turrets. All points move backwards one space, two spaces, or three spaces. Silo Surstern. So you can remove white means you any die number. Uh, doesn't matter what color. And then you gain some fusion dice. Nuclear stockpile. Oh boy. That could be crazy. Um and then Hegray Cistern. It's a little bit cheaper one. Alright, that's our secret prize. Unless they have more mixed in one of the other decks, which is always possible. Alright, so let's look at that Triceratops bones that we saw at the beginning of the video. The Anning Ram. So you may discard this card to cause damage to someone in front of you. Nice. Like the base set didn't have uh, damaging cards. So that's another thing I like. They had the gears in this, they had the gears here, they had the damage cards. So this one doesn't normally inherently do anything, the armored plating, but it does give you some options by spending gears. The electrolyzer. Two uh, electric, take a hit of damage, uh, but you could always explode this card to gain a fusion die. The Eureka motor. Nice, getting some extra electricity. A fusion reactor. Play one of each different color to gain either speed or a fusion. Maybe a bunch of those, of course. Uh, we have a heat shield. Play steam to gain some resistance or explode it to gain a bunch of fire dice. A uh, heavy side. Heavy side cabling. Sense of fire to gain some electricity. The high pressure boiler. Uh, so now this one's interesting. Because there we have the steam plus you can explode it for two speed. Um, I like it's kind of showing shooting out the back already. You know, that might, that's end of the game thing, like, right? You're, like, great towards the end. Speed through, or if you have, like, them jumps, or, uh, you know, some hazards, maybe. Just take the hits, right? Uh, Magnetox Reactor. Uh, Ranking Boiler. To gain some extra steam, or remove a steam and gain a fusion. The step down transformer. I think we had to step up in the last one. So now we have the step down. Which would make sense. 
uh, turbo molecularizer 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 I oh boy why is that word hard for me that shouldn't be a hard word uh, gain some steam though possibly some fusion Volcic plating steam for electricity or remove electricity that's cool Alright, and then now we have some more inventors. We have Alan Turning, who uh, gets the two gears, and he has, ooh, what do we have here? We have the, it goes behind it. So that's actually kind of interesting. It only has one spot. We have a machine. Discard this part when the opponent plays a boost card to ignore its effect. Getting a lot of gears with him. Up next, we will have, and they have their special board on the outside as well. We have Amelia Earhart. Like, it's just like a little, like, rocket type ship, like, pushing everything. So she takes some fire. Oh, look, there's the front of her plane. Um, Electra Tangy. So it's like theirs might all be a little bit more unique than the base game. The base game had a bunch that were the same. Well, no, it looks like we have some that are the same. So you have Andrei Sakhar Sakharov, and he has the plasma drive, which we've seen before. I don't know why some some maybe it's it might just be the difference between if their cockpit isn't as unique, they gain a unique um, extra piece. So we have Asthma Chattery. So when you draft a solid card in the draft, you gain a gear. Oh, you have a Plasma Drive, which we just saw. So like where his is just like a really generic one. Like August Picard, he just gains a gear. Nothing super special there. Um, so he gains an extra special, uh, extra invention piece. The Bath Escape Balloon. Discard this card when an opponent plays a boost to ignore its effect. We've seen that ability before, but not necessarily those two uh, icons. Uh, Carlton Ellis with a, another Plasma Drive. Kind of makes me wonder if you pick all the guys with the Plasma Drives, like, first time around. Or they pick, or like you're playing the first, there's a couple like turbine engine, I think it was, a bunch of the same ones. Um, would make it sort of like a fair game play to start with. You have a different cockpit ability, but your initial cards all the same. Um, LC McGill, McGill, she's got the hurricane. Oh boy, you may discard this card to cause some damage. Just like that T Rex. Not T Rex, it's a Triceratops. A T Rex would be ridiculous. Uh, Hedy Lamar. If you're wondering who these are, again, check out the booklet, the instruction book. They'll have uh, information. Uh, plasma Drive. Uh, so we got two more in this pile. We have Igor Sikorsky. And he's got the little, like, uh, mosquito-type airplane. Um, and I remember that because, uh, in S Marvel Comics, Star Jammers, there's a little, uh, mosquito-type character called, S uh, Sikorsky. Um, and I'm sure they named him after that. And that's why I always remember, like, the guy's like a little mosquito-y picture. So here he's got a place in, card normally doesn't do anything, but you play Gears, you can gain smooth speed, but you're gonna take some damage. The Sky Stallion. And we have Annie Eastley, who has the Centaur Rocket. All right, now let's look at some gold pieces. Uh, ambulators, walking feet, a uh, number of parts of your invention. Got a bunch of those. We have the these are the movement ones. The auto gyro. Uh, 
yeah, it's getting stuff based on how many parts you have. So the more parts you have, the better these are. The charge spin acre. Gain one movement, one gear, and you can destroy it to heal yourself. Nice. Especially some of them hazards, that could definitely be cool. The Dran Sign. Gain some fire dice. The Maglev. So it's a, that's a firefly thing, right? Maglev. Um, it's you know, sci-fi invention uh, in general. Uh, we have the Osculation Overdrive. So you only get one speed, but you can murder this card to gain um, smooth and a fusion. Plasma Jets. Ooh, two fusion guys. That one. That's super cool. Uh, Rocket Steez. Gain some extra speed. Uh, just a sale, because why not? Um, doesn't cost anything, you just gain two, two speed, but you have to take a point of damage. I mean, you can even, like, take the two and then end up sacrificing that afterwards if you don't need it. We have some stabilizers. A velocipede. Gain a bunch of extra gears. Uh, the Vernine Thrusters. So, it's one other thing I didn't mention. I said I was going to come back to it, but I didn't get it. So, example of, like, this card. If I place two gears here to gain this ability, or I place one gear and I don't get another one out yet, or whatever, and I end up having to destroy this because of damage, I get those two gears back. So, it's never... It's never like a really big, I don't want to say big deal, but it's not an issue to go ahead and spend your points into them if you have them. Because you're going to get them back. Alright, so then we have a bunch of boost cards. So we have our Acid Rain. At the beginning of the next upkeep phase, all inventors lose all gold machine parts that have dice on them. Oh boy. That could really hurt someone, but I mean, hurt, could potentially hurt you too. Uh, with Aerofoil, if you have no, uh, remove two fire dice. If you have no exposed valve space and upward, gain a speed per damage currently on your damage gauge. Interesting, so very specific. Um, back to the drawing board. If you have four or fewer machine parts, you may either add your starting propulsion card Back to your invention or vent all nine fusion dice from any one machine part. Oh, that's interesting. We have a black hole. In clockwise order, each player chooses to either lose one machine part or remove two spaces or move two spaces closer to you. You may then draft one of the lost machine parts. So good if you're falling behind. Um, or if you're in front, it might be risky maneuver. Um, to let them get closer to you, uh, but then they're probably not going to discard parts, so you have no reason to move closer. Um, brain Drain. Players in front of you on the track must either give you all their gear or flip their invention side face down. Oh, that, yeah, that could, depending on what they have, that could be bad. Uh, we have Brine Monkeys, TM. In clockwise order, each opponent chooses to gain either two damage or allow you to move one non-fusion dice from a space on your invention to an empty space on theirs. This does not activate their machine parts. Uh, catapult. Oh, jeez. Four movement, take a point of damage. Ignore all movement. Ignore all movement you gain during this turn's race phase. Um, at the end of the race phase, all your opponents in your space within, or within three spaces in front of you gain two damage. So you move four, that's it for your turn. You take a point of damage, but you can also damage a bunch of players too. That's cool. Classic tunneling. Uh, remove a steam. Place a steam from the supply into any track space. Players within five or fewer machine parts 
skip this space and any damage cannot be prevented by any players with five or less may skip it and any damage from the train cannot be prevented. Uh, cold fusion. We'll just vent a bunch of stuff and gain a fusion die. Couple of those. Uh, we have a cow catcher. Two speed and some defense. If you played this last round, you win any ties. The Escher field. Uh, reorient, reorientate a machine part sideways or upside down for the rest of the game. Valves must still fit. This machine part may not be vented. Any pip on the machine part is now zero. So you have to play them all the correct direction. So this lets you mess with that rule and cheat a bit. Uh, freeze ray. Oh, move, remove five fire guys. This round, all spaces without terrain cost two movement or one smooth to enter. The Havoc, the Harpoon Havoc. Indicate one machine part non cockpit on an opponent's invention. If they do not discard that part, they gain you gain one speed. They move backwards one space and you may activate this effect again. Limit once per opponent. Oh, this is kinda of like a alternate version of the original grappling hook from the first one. Uh Hughes Hydraulic Excavator. Steam. Remove a steam. For the rest of the game, gain two uh, gear for each damage you take from terrain. Hydrolysis. You may discard a machine part in any three dice from your discard pile to gain nine gear. Inspiration. Ooh, flip your inspiration card back over. Nice, your light bulb. Jury rig. Discard up to ten gear, gain one speed for every two Gears you discarded. That could be helpful. Uh, we have a lab assistant. Uh, discard a machine part. Choose an unused inventor cockpit and add it to your invention. You only explode if you are forced to discard all cockpits. Um, magnet claw. Uh, place an electric on the track. Again, you Gray space, remove it. Opponents who move uh, into or through the space must lose a machine part. You may draft one lost part. We have a meteor shower. Indicate an empty die slot in each opponent's invention in clockwise order. That opponent chooses to either place a fusion die in that spot without activating it or add one fusion to your die, die pool. I love them choices. Uh, non regulation pack mules. If there's at least one inventor ahead of you, you gain four speed. You may not enter a space with other inventors. Interesting. Uh, we have a pit stop. Put a gear from the supply space on the track at the end of the race phase. Each inventor in that space gains three, re three restored shields and three gear. Have to plan that one pretty well. Uh, radiation. Gain three fire for each fusion in your invention. Um, each inventor gains a fusion die for, for each stash boost card they had at the start of the space, not including this one. Uh, roll cage. Discard all your non-cockpit machine parts and set your damage gauge to zero. That's kind of neat. It's like exploding, but you get to decide where to do it. Uh, salvage core. Roll up to 12 of the dice you vent. All of the dice you vent this space and add them to your die pool during the next race phase. Uh, steel credit. Tesla prevent, presents revolutionary adventuring. Uh, when another player plays a boost card, play this card in response to stash that card. Gain two gear. If played on stolen blueprints, swap it with swap this card with it. So I get I'm gonna stick to stolen blueprints. Play this card when choosing cards from the draft to draft an additional card before passing it to the next. Add stolen blueprints to the card you are passing. Interesting. Traveling salesman. Uh during a card 
turn a card face up from each part in boost deck. Draft one of your one of your choice inventors, then draft the remaining three. Start the inventor lap. Inventor in last going forward, ending with the inventor in first. Ties are broken in draft direction. Uh, Vibronic Coupling. Draw two silver machine cards. Draft one of them if at least one half of your non-cockpit machine parts are silver. Gain four speed. Right, two of those, and we finally have Steam Devils. At the end phase of the race, uh, each inventor takes two... Uh, damage unless they pass or have space with terrain. Alright, that's all our boosts. So the only thing we have left are the event cards. So these are new. So there's one for the Machu Picchu and one for Mars. These also work as turn order cards. So if you're playing with these, use these instead of the little turn, turn order token. Um, so let's go through, let's sort of separate these out. Let's look at the Mars ones first. So you can play these and activate extra effects during the game. So like Black Smokes. Inventor and tripod spaces either move backward one space or immediately lose one machine part. Inventors and tripod spaces either flip down their in your light bulb the next round or lose one machine part. And then two dice of the type shown in the corner. Harvesting. Um, heat ray. Inventors and tripod spaces may lose one of their machine parts with a dice in the corner. And gain four of this dice type. The red weed. Inventors and tripod spaces either spend two gear or immediately lose one non-cockpit cockpit machine part and gain two gear. And then we have... Tentacles. I'm not sure why some are yellow and some are green. So you have one of each. I don't know if that's just... Oh, it's a left and a right. That's why they did it that way. Um, I gotcha. Uh, tentacles. Inventors and tripod spaces either immediately lose one machine part or gain two damage. So, since we're talking about that, if we go to... The Kyles. So a tripod space are these red ones. Um, so anyone that have the red ones in the Mars spot are going to be tripod spots. So a little tripod next to it. That's how you figure out those. Um, the other side for the Machu Picchu is going to be these purple ones. Are you going to activate the event cards. So whenever you enter one of the purple spaces. Which are called... I don't remember. Artifact zones. So here we have cosmic knowledge. Gain two lightning. Uh, peek at your top two cards of the artifact deck and put them in any order on the top or bottom of the deck. If you're in first player to activate this artifact zone, lose a machine part. So it seems like I think Machu Picchu is going to be the easier side of the two. Because here all these cards are kind of like beneficial, like cryo chamber. Uh, pressure plate. If an inventor on this artifact zone, all inventors next on the next track tile gain minus two uh, damage. Take two damage. I can't figure out how to say that. Um, Stargate. Immediately lose one machine part, non-cockpit, or gain three speed, doubling on any terrain damage. If you end another artifact, resolve it immediately. And then unknown ally, alloy, um, two steam, gain a shield, immediately draw one machine part or boost from any deck and draft it. Alright, so that's cool, like extra little bonuses and stuff. Um, very last thing I want to do in this video, I don't want to do a separate video just for these, is we're going to go over the Kickstarter cards. So this one video here will be a little bit longer. But there's not too many cards in this in here, and then we can be done. So these were available in the first Kickstarter, the uh, Steampunk Rally set. They're available from other sites. Some some of them are. You can find some on Board Game Geek. Uh, there's some other options there. 
So here's all our different inventors. Um, and we'll go through all of them. But there's our cards. And they get a little bit different borders too. So also neat. Makes them kind of stand out a bit. So these guys are kind of crazy. That's why we're going to go through. So we have... S S uh, Spege Passing. So he's going to gain a uh, place of fire and get removed from fire and gain a fire, guys. And he gets the Perpetuum Mobile. Oh, so it goes to the front. So he gets to attach a car to this. And then now this side is going to show that. And then the back side here is going to talk about who this is. Um, oh, it's pronounced Speedy. Kind of similar to Spige. Uh, Seth's so just going to tell what he is. He's a Finnish inventor. So this guy only died in 2001. So I mean that's. You know 20 years ago at this point. But still he's a, a recent inventor. Um, not compared to our next guy. Leonardo da Vinci. Um, activate another one of your machine parts once. As though it had the light bulb. That's cool. Um, and then we have the air screw. And on the back side of his, we'll have his little bit of history. Hopefully most people know who Leonardo da Vinci is. I just, I just, I haven't read any of these before, so I just caught this at the bottom. Um, experience in a cave that has some, some have interpreted as an encounter with Martians. Could just be connected to the autumn Automation that is joining the rally. It's not just his regular history, but even like his in game history. Uh, Sergey Cor Corvel Corlev. So, this guy, if you play a fusion guy, this is a special promo for this set because this wouldn't be for the first one. Um, if you have five or fewer parts in your invention, you gain a fusion guy. And then he has Volstack 7. Okay, so some of these are from the original. Some are from the new one. Uh, unfortunately it doesn't show anything on there to specify that. So yeah he's on there. So I'm not really sure. Because he is a fusion guy. Alright uh, well we have Maria... Uh, Kalkis. She's got like some solar panel stuff going there. Oh, she gets a thermal desinolator. So some storage spaces. Those are always fun to have. And she's, uh, she only died in 1995. So again, more of a modern, um, inventor. Alright, uh, what else do we have here? We have some other big crazy ones. So we have Dr. Brahm. Um, so this is interesting because it's, uh, just a full, a full thing. So this is, uh, supposed to be, uh, Brawn, like Dr. Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Uh, because he's got this, so he just it gains some speed. And then, if he has three speed from a single action, you know, 88 miles per hour, he can gain some extra stuff. Um, so it says that 19 question mark to question mark arriving from the future. So how to use activate using heat or electricity die to gain smooth motion racing effects. You may combine both dice types in a single action bonus. Anytime you generate three motion or smooth motion race effects from using a boost card or from the activation machine parts, you gain the extra bonus. So it's kind of neat. It's like uh it gave me like a weird bookmark rather than like two separate cards. Um because it all works together as one giant thing. 
But it also kind of makes it a little bit harder to store. It would have been... I still would have preferred it being two separate cards. Uh, we have another one like that. A couple of these promos are like that. So we have Red Green. Um, anyone not familiar with Red Green is... He's a... He's a comedian slash general, like, handyman. Like, he does stuff with duct tape. Uh, just by the ball, he's duct tape listed on there. You can see that he literally is pulling the ship by taping it to a van. Um, and he has a giant duck on the back of his trailer. Um, and then there's his nephew hanging out the door. That's hilarious. So, Red Green, uh... Currently, at least as of this printing, is not dead. Um, I'm sorry, it says when you attach parts without proper without proper valve connections, you may attach parts without proper valve connections by spending a cog to mark them as duct tape together. You may not separate these parts. If a tap part is destroyed and separated, regain the cog and gain one die type in the card's corner. Dice gained in the damage phase are kept for the next round. So, okay, so what this is saying here is you can combine two things that don't go together with his duct tape, and if it's destroyed by the duct tape spot, you gain one die and one cog. So that's actually pretty funny, because he duct tapes everything together. Um, Alright, who else do we have here? We have... Uh, Ignacy Lusowitz. Um, so he's got this big giant one. He's got three or four, maybe like an oil rig there. And then here is his. So this is how to use, instead of selecting an inventor and a corresponding machine part, one player may opt to begin the game using only this inventor cockpit card. Ability, gain cog and heat die whenever you discard a drafted card or die cogs. Um, hey, buy this card. I like how his, uh, death has a question mark, like, they're not sure. Yeah, so every time you discard, you gain either a die or a cog, and then you can... If you gain one of those, you can spend it. So it's kind of, again, they're just, these really big cards are kind of neat, they're interesting, but they also are, um... Hard, really harder to store. So we have... Uh, Zhong Ling and Lady Hong, who, uh, gains, uh, you can place a steam die there, and then you can destroy this to either do damage multiple directions, oh, he's just kind of a mechanical bull, that's crazy, um, or gain Kukog, or gain a speed, so let's see exactly how that works. Um, light bulb effect, gain one steam die. So that's just that one right there. Otherwise, it says, bonus, if you lose exactly one part to damage this stage, all opponents take two damage for the next round. If you lose exactly two, gain two cogs. If you lose three or more parts, gain one smooth motion. So if you lose a bunch of parts, you gain a bunch of bonuses. So that's actually kind of cool. All right, we have one more big card like that. We have Lizzie Maggie. So you play, it looks like, I'm guessing, two of any guy. And equals, you get three. Um, play something and during the fa end of the phase, you gain s some houses. It's like Monopoly houses. It just looks like Monopoly. I see, because here's the, uh, the wheelbarrow. There's some Monopoly houses. There's the car, top hat. There's the boot. And if we look up at the top here, here's the Scotty. That's interesting, so, um... Alright, activation. Place any two dice with matching pips to gain three movement. Bonus, if you have three hotel tokens borrowed from another game on your shelf. At the end of the race phase, each opponent may pay two cogs per hotel on their current... On their current track tile. At the end of... Each race... Each opponent must pay you two cog per hotel on their current track tile. If they cannot pay, they must discard machine parts with cogs shown in the corner if they have any. Gaining these cogs from the supply until they have enough to pay. 
Um, then you may place a die showing the pips equal to or greater than the number of opponents in the game from your pool to the hotel dice slot to place hotel tokens in the corner of any track tile. If you place a hotel token on a tile with no other hotels, you may you must reclaim any previously placed hotels. The guide can be used to vent later as normal. Interesting. Um, so she's basically the person that created or had the idea for Monopoly um, before Parker Brothers kind of used it. So that's a weird effect. Like, that's cool, interesting. I don't know if I'd ever use it. It's really hard. Then the last big giant card we have, just two sides of those other ones, is Rube Goldberg. And if you're not familiar with Rube Goldberg, he makes these inventions that you do this thing, it clicks this thing, it does that thing, it does this thing. So here you play a fire die. It's going to burn this rope, which is going to... Drop this ball down into this bucket, which is going to move this bird up. It's going to hit this ball, which will swing around here. Uh, hit. Drop this cheese down. This mouse, this mouse is going to roll forward to hit this hammer. It's going to drop forward and move this fist. This fist is going to punch this hammer, and you're going to gain one speed. Oh, because he'll roll down, hit this axe, he'll chop the cheese, he can move that. That's what Rube Goldberg is like. One thing sets off a chain of events. Uh, it's, just what, it's, a, it's just a funny card to say one fire gets you one speed, uh, essentially. Um, instead of selecting an inventor and corresponding machine, one player may opt to begin this using only this card. So that's actually, it's clever. I like it. They're clever cards, some of these uh, bigger promos. Uh, but they're hard to use. The last one we have is a spoiler. So I got two of these, and it just says, at the start of each race pay phase, place a fusion and a supply on the track. If you finish the race phase or an adjacent space, if you finish the race phase on it or adjacent to a space, you gain it for the next round. Otherwise, discard it. Uh, in New Orleans, Black Herman gets a glimpse of the signature trick and might yet postpone the apocalypse. It's kind of interesting. Like, creates the... And then we have just the back there, just showing off the 2020 pack. Alright, so that's what we have for... Steampunk Rally Fusion Atomic Edition, which is both sets. Uh, I know it's a lot of videos, that's why I'm gonna, I broke them all up, rather than doing one super long video um definitely this would be fun to try out and play have to get a couple people i don't know eight people might be a little bit much uh but the draft mechanics and all that stuff should really be fun different bunch of different created characters um and i love the fact that they have like even though the fusion added a bunch of new mechanics um it still feels like you can play the you can mix with the regular when the regular one doesn't seem bad. It doesn't even seem like it's necessarily easy. It's just different stuff. Um, because there's the jumps and some more crowd and things on the board which are gonna make things more difficult. Um Alright, so that's all I got. Catch you guys later. Bye.